Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you are all doing well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. In this video today, I wanted to do a bit of a roundup and kind of pattern comparison of making a coat or a jacket. And there is a blog post that's linked to this video as well, which I'll put the link of um, below just in the description of the video. So you can have a little look at that and it sort of is like notes basically of what I'm going to say. And then also links to a lot of the patterns as well. All of the patterns that I will mention are independent patterns from the independent companies. And they're all ones that we stock in my online shop. Um, but I hope that I've chosen a selection of different styles of coats so that even if you do decide to not use one of these patterns, but you use another coat pattern instead, then hopefully this, um, blog, this vlog and blog post will sort of help you kind of work out the differences between different styles and things to consider as well so I've got I've got a bit of a chunk here these are all the different ones that I'm going to sort of um, chat to you about and I have made three of them I've almost made four I'm working on my fourth one just now so I'll be able to show you close-ups of my version of those coats as well but I wanted to sort of give you some just general info and tips and things to consider when you come to choose to make a coat or a jacket in the first place. Um, a lot of people get quite put off making a coat or a jacket, which is totally understandable. I have been there myself, um, you know, a few years ago, maybe like three, sort of three, four years ago, it would have seemed, felt like really daunting for me. But having made several coats now over the last few years, it's actually not as scary as you would think and even if you are a bit of a less experienced dressmaker and you've not made that many things don't rule a coat out still think about it have a look at the style and the design and also the independent pattern company instructions are usually really really good and they quite often have sew alongs as well which are really supportive so it's don't sort of just block it out as a like no I'm not advanced enough for that still consider it because just by choosing the, the right pattern, a simple pattern with a fabric that's easy to work with, you totally will be able to make a coat. I absolutely love making coats and jackets. I find them so rewarding. You know, you know at the start, you're not gonna get it all finished right away. So you just have to accept that it's gonna take a bit of time and just take your time with it. Just break it down. You can like really get your teeth into it. And I just, I just love the process of putting all of those bits together. And then also one of the best things about making a coat or a jacket is that you get to wear it all the time. You know, if you make a if you make a shirt or a blouse or a top or dress or whatever, you can't really wear it every day. I mean, you could, but you probably wouldn't. But if you make a coat or anorak jacket, whatever, you get to wear it all the time. So all of that time you've spent investing in making it, you just seem to get that back because you get to wear your garment every day if you want and nobody will think anything of it. So first of all, in terms of choosing a size when you come to make the coat or the jacket, because I want to talk about this first because it kind of applies to whatever pattern you're going to make. Um, and the main thing to consider is what the finished garment measurements are because a coat will always be bigger than your actual body measurements. The chances are you're gonna have layers on underneath, maybe quite a thick jumper. So you don't really want your coat to be mega fitted. You need space to move, in which case the coat is gonna be bigger than your actual body measurements. So always look at the finished measurement chart when you're coming to choose your size. So I'm gonna use the Kelly Anorak as an example. And you can see here, this is the size chart for choosing your size. So these are American sizes, remember, so that's why they start at zero um, and then go up to 20. So when I made my Kelly, I um, I made a size six and that fitted my, um, my body measurements. Apart from my waist, my waist is like a little bit bigger than a 27. It depends on the day. And then if you look at the finished garment measurements, you can see that um, the waist finished measurement is actually 38 and a half inches and that's if your waist is 27 so that's quite a lot of ease I mean if my waist is sometimes 28 inches I'm still going to have over 10 inches of ease at the waist so you know that actually that will be fine and um, same at the hips as well my hips probably more like 36 and a half but the finished measurement sizes of the hip is 43 and a half so you can sort of if you're between sizes or you're not sure 
whether to size up or size down. Look at the finished measurement sizes because it can help you work out how much ease there is in the garment, how much bigger the garment is than your actual body. Take that into consideration with the style of the garment as well. So if it's quite an A-line shape at the bottom, then you know there's going to be more space in the hip anyway, and that can really help you in terms of choosing a size. The other thing that you can do, which might help you to sort of work out the size as well, if you're worried about a particular part of your body and it not sort of fitting in or being too big or too small, you can measure the pattern pieces as well. So if we take the example of this yoke piece, which is from the Cascade duffel coat pattern, which I'll talk about later, um, you know, if you're, if you're wondering how tight it's going to be across the back or if you're going to have enough room, then you can just measure the, the pattern piece times it by two because this piece is cut on the fold and then take off the seam allowance and then you'll get an idea of where that width is going to sit and where that finished width of that particular pattern piece is going to be on your body and then if you're doing it for a back yoke piece for example you probably need a friend to help you then and um, just to hold the measuring tape up against your back and then you can you can sort of compare that so that's another way just measuring the actual pattern pieces as well is another good way to sort of get an idea of how certain parts of the garment will fit onto your body so what I want to talk about, what I want to talk to you about next is choosing your fabric. And depending on the style of coat that you make, you can, you know, will affect the type of fabric you use. So if it's an anorak, then using a waxed cotton or waterproof type fabric, or if it's more like a coat, you're going to be using a sort of thicker woolen fabric. In terms of woolen fabric, the higher the percentage of wool that's in the coat, the warmer the coat will be. So even if the coat feels quite sort of thick and spongy, um, and it's, but it's got a low wool content, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be particularly warm. Um, but if you've got a really high percentage of wool, like 80 to 100%, even if the fabric is a bit thinner, it will still be really, really warm just because the natural properties of wool mean that it is just really good at keeping you warm. Um, so that's one thing to consider is the actual content of the the, the fiber content of the fabric. Obviously, the more wool it's got, the more expensive it's going to be because natural fibers do tend to be more expensive, um, but it will have that, that benefit of being much, much warmer. Um, we stock a whole range of different woolen fabrics and they're all linked to in the blog post. And then we do also have a waterproof fabric as well, like water resistant fabric, and it is made in Britain. It's a it's called um, Millerine. Uh, that's the company who make it. And it's it's got a waxed finish on it, but it's not that sort of saturated kind of wet wax. Um, and you can actually machine wash it as well, but I'll link that I'll link to that in the blog as well. I've used that to make two of the jackets that I'm going to show you today, so I'll show you that later on. Um, the other fabric things to consider are the lining fabric and then also the interlining as well and the interfacing. So interfacing is something that you're going to iron, usually you would iron it on, but you can get sewing interfacing as well, but the iron on interfacing you would be ironing that onto the main outer fabric at certain parts of the garment to help stabilize it so it's going to be things like the collar and um, usually it's across the back yoke as well because it helps to just stop the back yoke stretching out and um, it would maybe be down the front if there's you know depending on the fastening of the coat it might be the hem sometimes it gets put on around the armholes as well just to stabilize the armholes so that they don't get stretched out and I have also interfaced my whole entire main fabric before so when I made my clear coat before I even cut the main fabric out, I spot fused interfacing onto it, cut it out and then properly fused on. So it meant every single bit of the outer fabric of the coat had interfacing on it. And that's just because it was a bit of a lighter wool fabric and I didn't want it to stretch out over time. So it just helps to give the coat a bit more structure and stability. So that's interfacing. Interlining is something that is, is like the filling of a sandwich. So you've got your main fabric on one side, your normal lining fabric, fabric on the other side so the lining fabric that you see and then in between those layers you've got interlining and you can put that into your garment to help give an extra insulating layer so when I made my Kelly anorak I put interlining into that and I used a fabric called Thinsulate which I will link to in the blog post as well 
and um, we don't actually stock that it comes from a specialized website and um, for those sort of types of technical fabrics but thinsulate is a special interlining which you don't see it goes right on the inside of your jacket and is it's just an insulating fabric it keeps you really warm and um, so you can you can have an interlining for that and um, and then in terms of the lining the main thing you want to think about when you're choosing your lining is you want to make sure that the coat is easy to get on and off so 100% definitely if you're lining the sleeves of a coat if that's what the pattern calls for not all not all coats or anoraks ask for that but if you are lining the sleeves make sure that you use a slippy lining so something that is anti-static and that you can kind of slip your arm in and out makes it much easier to get the coat on and off so just like a regular usually they're polyester lining but you can get fancier ones like a you can get silk ones that are slippy and um, and viscose linings as well which are slippy too but it needs to just be something that's slippy then for the main body of the coat you can just use a slippy fabric again or what I've done on quite a few occasions just because it looks a bit fancier and it's easier to get nice patterned lining when you use a, a non-traditional lining fabric and um, as I've used cotton lawn to, to line the bodice part it does still sort of stick to your clothes a little bit but I've found that it's okay you can still get the coat on and off and um, but you would just use that for the bodice and I've used it for the hood as well so you so that's the sort of main bit of lining that you see and then it looks nicer and um, but then still use the slippy stuff for the sleeves so they are the sort of fabric considerations that you might want to do but obviously each pattern is going to recommend a bit more specifically what type of fabric is good for that garment. The next thing that I want to address that applies to any sort of pattern that you're choosing is how you're going to care or wash for your fabric um, before and after you've made the garment as well. I have done a separate video that is purely just about washing and caring garment for garments but I want to sort of specifically mention it in terms of woolen fabrics because we as as somebody who sells woolen fabrics at a fabric shop and um, we get asked this quite a lot and if fabric like coating fabric has got wool in it it's it's going to be really that it's, it needs to be dry cleaned so quite a lot of people ask us do we need to dry clean it before we cut it out my personal preference and this is what I do is that I don't dry clean it before um, and I don't usually actually really treat the fabric before either some people will put fabric in the tumble dryer with a with a damp um, dishcloth and just sort of tumble it around and heat it up and get it a bit damp just so that any sort of movement in the fabric that might happen is going to happen. I did do that with my clear coat but I just didn't really feel that confident about it and I was worried about my fabric so I put it in for about 15 minutes. don't actually know if that was long enough to do anything. didn't look any different when I took it out. Um, but you know giving it a good steam and just leaving it out to dry could also work. Um, but yeah I don't tip, I typically don't dry clean it and if you were to buy a coat from the shops it's not going to have been dry cleaned or treated before it's just going to be like after the fabric's made it's just made into a garment and then you're going to buy it and then you know eventually down the line you might think crikey I need to clean that coat and then you get it dry cleaned coats tend to not get really mucky as such I mean you know how often do you actually wash a coat? I don't really wash mine that often. You know, you might wear gloves, I wear scarves a lot if I've got gonna have a coat that's around my face to try and minimise makeup transfer. So um yeah, I tend to just kind of go for it with coats. I don't really worry too much about pre-washing, but that's my personal preference. Um, so in terms of the specific patterns themselves, I'm going to go through each one now. And as I said, I've made quite a few of them too, so I'll show you my versions up close. So the first one that I've got is the Closet Case Patterns Kelly Anorak. It has quite a classic sort of fitted shape. You, it's got an optional drawstring and an optional hood as well. And it is unlined, so as you buy out the packet, it's unlined, but there are lining options that you can have with this pattern you can either buy a separate pdf that's an ex lining expansion pack or you can flat line it which is what i did with my version so i quilted my fabric to my external my lining fabric that you would see in the coat and then i cut my pieces out and then i put those lining pieces with the outer pieces and basted them around the outside edge and just pretended that they were one bit of fabric and then constructed the coat so that's a bit of a simpler way to do it um, but as it comes out the packet it is unlined in terms of difficulty it's rated as a three out of five which is probably because of the zip and the poppers and um, the pockets are quite fiddly the hood as well um, and then it's got the set in sleeves and the cuffs 
so yeah I mean there's quite a lot to take on there but the sew along is really really good for this pattern I used it a lot when I made mine so and um, that I, I would su I would suggest using that if you feel a little bit less conf confident about tackling it because that so long was really really good and um, when I made my version I used some of our antique gold millerine fabric which is the waxed fabric but it's not the sort of wet wax fabric um, and I absolutely love it it is very well worn now I made it last year and I wore it a lot because I used the thin silate lining it's really really warm and um, but yes, I totally love this coat and when we do our outerwear sewing retreats um, in our studio this is one of the options that a lot of people pick to make and I just love seeing everybody's different options. It just always comes out really well and it looks really good in a lot of people. Um, so it's one of my favourite ones. Um, the next pattern that I, I have got is the paper cut waiver jacket pattern and I've chosen to do this one next because you can make a, a similar functional in terms of function jacket as you can to the Kelly because I've my version you also used our millerine waxed fabric too but it's just a much simpler construction so if you're a bit less experienced this is a really good one it comes lined that's just the way that it is when it comes out the pattern it's not got a zip it's got press studs at the front or buttons um, and it does have the hood as well and yeah it is, it's much simpler because it has got raglan sleeves and the pockets are much simpler they're just sort of flat um, flat patch pockets there's two different length options there's an optional drawstring as well I, when I made my version I didn't use the drawstring um, but it is quite a versatile pattern you can use um, you can use cotton it's saying cotton linen or wool I mean that covers quite a lot of bases and um, so yeah there are you can you can really sort of tailor this coat to either be like a cozy warm one or more of a lighter weight sort of rain jacket one which is what I did for my version um, it's rated as skilled um, you know it's, it's not like a complete beginner's pattern and you know it's got the lining in it and that sort of a thing to get your head around but in terms of a coat jacket pattern it is definitely one of the easier ones and um, the next one is the clear coat and I also absolutely love my version of the clear coat as well it's version b that i did for mine so it's got studs at the bottom but i actually put bound button holes in mine so i made this a couple of years ago and it's been really really well well worn since um and it, it's recommended medium to heavyweight coating fabrics it does have quite an a-line shape you know it's 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 got raglan sleeves as well so in terms of difficulty that's that's a bit easier to cope with um but I just really like the shape of it. It's got these these side panels. It's got a dart as well, which makes it a bit more fitted at the bust. It's also got a dart in the sleeve as well, which is really good in terms of having a, a sleeve that you can move around in nice and easily. So yeah, this this pattern totally gets my vote as well. It's a really nice one. And as far as like a full on coat pattern that you're going to make that's got lining and everything, it's probably one of the easier ones because of the raglan sleeves and that they are much easier to construct. Um, so that's the clear coat. The next one is the Grain Line Patterns Cascade Duffel Coat. So it comes with two versions as well. You've got two length versions. You've got an optional hood or a collar and you can mix and match them as well. Um, and it is got a hidden zipper, which you can leave out. That is also optional. And then it's got these sort of classic toggles on the front as well. In terms of difficulty of this one, it is rated as advanced. Um, there are a lot of pieces in this in this project there's i think there's about 40 pieces and like 60 steps so there is quite a lot to do when you break it down it's you know it's just it's just seems at the end of the day it can be broken down and um, this is the one that i'm currently working on and i'm going to show be showing you this project that i've done in much more detail over the next few weeks so if you're interested in that one then stay tuned for next um week's video and um, it's recommended medium to heavyweight coating fabric so melting boiled or felted wool and um, but you could also make it in a canvas or a twill for a lighter jacket so also could be versatile in terms of what you want to use the jacket for is it more of a transitional thing or is it a warmer sort of winter jacket um, but yeah it's also fully lined as well so it's quite you know it is a really meaty one but yeah i can't wait to show you my version 
totally love it. Um, so the next one that I'm going to show you is another green line pattern and it is the Yates coat and it is slightly oversized. It's got these inseam pockets so that sort of seam line that runs across the front of the jacket is that's where the pockets are there and it folds over quite a lot so it's almost like it could be double breasted but you don't actually see the buttons on the, the outside of the garment and got these sort of big lapels as well. It just looks like a really comfy sort of coat that you can kind of bung, up, bung over anything. Um, it's also asking for medium to heavyweight fabrics um, and then in terms of difficulty it's rated as intermediate so there's just there's a bit less going on in this one compared to the cascade I guess because it's not got the hood and um, it does have a two-piece sleeve which is which is also really good in a coat because it just means that the sleeve is much easier to sort of wear um, and it's easier for you to move as well um, so yeah that's the Yates one very different style from the others the next one that I've got is another paper cut one and it is the Separo coat and you can see that it is a really oversized style of garment um, which is, is really popular right now um, it's, it's really bold it's th they're saying it's got this dramatic cocoon silhouette and angled seaming it, it, it is designed to be oversized it's designed to be worn open and you can also make this one quite versatile because you could either do it in a cosy wool for cooler weather or choose a lighter weight fabric so a uh, you know a lighter cotton fabric so i would it, it's kind of one of those more sort of coatigan style ones because it is so oversized and like the yates it's got these inseam pockets as well so you can also make that one quite versatile i would also say in terms of difficulty this one's quite simple because it's oversized obviously you've not got any fitting issues because it's supposed to be big anyway and there's there's no set in sleeves it, the, the, you know all the all the seams are just quite of lot quite long and big and it's all quite simple shapes so I would say that's one of the, the simpler ones to use for that one. The next one is another paper cut one and it is the Watson jacket. This one's a little bit more involved. It's It's got this double breasted look at the front. You can have this little caplet as well, but you can leave that out if you don't want that. And then it's got a collar too and it's fully lined as well. Um, there is there is a bit more going on in this coat. That's why it's rated as expert. Um, but you know it's it's a really cute one a nice one to get your teeth into and again it's recommending a wide range of fabrics for this so depending on what sort of function you want the coat to have so anything from cotton linen or wool so yeah you can choose you can choose how cozy or transitional you want it to be um so that is the paper cut Watson jacket and then the last one that I've got for, for you is a Pauline Alice one and it is the hemispheric coat and this one it's got a funnel collar it's got these long raglan sleeves it's fitted in the waist the bust in the waist and then it flares at the hips so you can see it's got um, these quite long sort of um, panels in it to make it really quite fitted it's recommended medium to heavyweight woven fabric, woolens, felt, boiled wool, tweed, gabardine. I think this type of coat, you, you need something that's going to sort of hold its shape so that you get that effect of the fullness in the, in the, the sort of lower section of it. Um, it's rated as a three, in terms of difficulty, rated as three. So it is quite advanced, it is lined as well, it's got a zip, so there's quite a lot going on in there, but I think it's a really, a really sort of distinctive style. It would be a really lovely statement coat, maybe a bit a bit more of a, I would see it as a bit more of a formal one. Um, I think if I was to make it, it would be a bit more of a dressy coat. Um, but another good alternative in a much different shape, because this one is much more fitted than the other ones. Um, so I hope that's given you a good idea of just different types of coat patterns that there are and the differences between them and also what to look for if you're looking for something simple or if you want something to be really warm and cosy or if you're looking for something to be a bit more transitional and lighter weight. There's lots of options out there and quite often with patterns, depending on your fabric choice, really changes how the coat could actually end up coming out. Um, if it, if the fabric you're using is really thick bulky wool that can be quite challenging to work with especially if the coat's got lots of panels or different sections to it because trying to get them all together and sit flat is hard and um, whereas if you've got a much simpler simpler style garment say like the waver jacket for example and you're using 
more like a heavier sort of cotton fabric or more like a you know a denim sort of twill fabric that's much easier to work with it's much more stable it presses really well it's going to go flat it's much easier so I want I want you to be open-minded when it comes to thinking about a coat pattern and try to sort of think no actually I could do this I just need to choose a certain pattern a certain fabric and actually you 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 can achieve it you just need to take your time a, a coat of jacket is never going to be one of those projects that you just sort of do and you bang out in a day or an evening it's going to be something that's a slow process you just need to take your time with it and enjoy it and then you get that amazing benefit at the end that you get to wear your garment all the time um so yeah tune in next week because i'm going to be showing you my green line patterns cascade duffel coat in much more detail because it's quite a beefy project there's actually going to be two videos and two blog posts associated with that so they'll be coming up over the next couple of weeks so if you haven't subscribed already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on them and thanks for tuning in guys and i'll see you soon bye